Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to look at this equation and we have to notice some distinguishing features about it that have to be in place in order for us to be able to use it to find slope and y-intercept from it. So the very first thing is I want you to look at this y and I hope you notice that first of all the coefficient is 1 because it's not listed, right? So it has a coefficient Sorry, I don't know what's going on with that. It has a coefficient of 1, right? So I'm going to just say co f equals 1. And it's also by itself, okay? So there's no other x terms or other numbers or anything over here. y is completely by itself, and it's only 1y, all right? It's not 2y or 3y or negative 8y or 2 thirds y. It's 1y. And that has to be the case in order for the slope-intercept form to work, all right? Now, on the other side, you notice that we've got, you've got two parts that go to this. So you've got your, your m. Your m is always the coefficient of the x variable. All right, and m is your slope. That's where we take this thing called slope, and that's where we put it. And if you think about it, that makes sense, because when we were doing the direct variation equations, wasn't slope just another way in those cases of saying the rate, right? Your rate was slope, and that went right in front of x as well. So the slope goes right in front of your x, and it's multiplying x. That's what it is. That's your multiplier. Okay, and then the stuff that you have left over on the side here, this is your y-intercept, okay? This is your y-intercept, and why they label them m and b, I don't know, but they must have been running out of other variables or letters that would have been better for this, but... My guess it has something to do with uh, the Latin and Greek word roots for slope and y-intercept, but who knows? So m and b are right over there. So m and b are on the same side of the equation. That's another distinguishing characteristic. And then the sign of whether or not you have a positive or a negative y-intercept is always going to be the sign that's right here with the b. And then if you have a negative slope, you'll have a negative in, in front of your number there. So let's take a look at a few examples here, okay? We kind of went over this, so if you want to stop and look at this, you can, but we covered this. All right, state the slope and y-intercept of the graph of the equation, all right? So looking at this, it looks like most of the parts are in order, all right? The y only has a coefficient of 1, so I can use this. So remember, your m is the number that's right in front of your x, so it's the coefficient of x. And the coefficient of x in this equation on this side is 2 thirds. All right, so that means that you have a rise of two, so it rises two, and then it a run of three, which means it goes to the right three, okay? Goes to the right three. That's the way I like to think of it. And then looking at the equation, we gotta find our y-intercept. Well, your y-intercept is that number that's off to the side, and it's a constant, right? It's never attached to a variable. It's by itself, so negative four, would be your b. So negative 4, and that is your y-intercept. So as long as you understand what these are, you're good writing m and b. Otherwise, if you want to write a physically write slope, okay, maybe I'll do that over here next to this one right here, slope. Okay, let's look at, we're going to do, uh, we're going to, I'm just going to do two of these. All right, we're going to do b and c. So we're going to pretend a is in there because that's pretty straightforward. All right, B, you've got Y equals 1 fourth X minus 6. So Y definitely has a coefficient of 1, so that's good. And so my slope, M, is the number that's in front of X, and in that case, it's 1 fourth. All right, and then my B, my Y-intercept, is the number that's off to the side, the constant, and that would be negative 6. So that means this line crosses the Y-axis at the point 0, negative 6, because that's where the y-intercept is. It's where it crosses the y-axis. And then 1 fourth is your slope. So you would go up 1 and over 4 to get another point, and then you could draw this line. And I will show you how to do that in later videos. All right, this last one here. Now, you notice that there's not a number in front of x, all right? And m is always the number that's in front of x. Well, if they don't have a number listed, what is it? 
So think about that. That's one of the conventions of algebra, is that if you have x, right, that's the same as saying you have one x. It means you have one group of that. If you have y, that's the same thing as saying you have one y. So on this one, I know it's negative because there's a negative sign, and then it will be negative 1. So I have a slope of negative 1, meaning that it goes down 1, and then over to the right 1. All right, and then this number off to the side, that is my y-intercept. So that means that this line, the equation of this line, crosses the y-intercept at the point 0, 5. And then it goes down 1 and over 1 to get your next point, and over to the right 1. All right, let's look at one last example. Um, this is kind of kind of funky because it doesn't follow this y equals mx plus b form. Um, y is not by itself, and y has a coefficient of negative 4. So all you got to do when you have a situation like this is just say, okay, um, let's make it look that way. What do we have to do to make it look like this? And you'll find out later that this is called standard form the way this is written, where x and y are on the same side, and they're both integers. So 5x minus 4y equals 2. I want y by itself. So let's start by moving 5x to the other side. Remember, when you move it to the other side, you can't actually physically combine it with the 2 because they are not like terms. 2 is a constant, and negative 5x is a term that includes a coefficient and a variable, so they're not similar. So we have 2 minus 5x. We're going to leave that the way it is just for now. And the next thing I'm going to want to do is I want to get this y so that its coefficient is 1. Well, remember, all you got to do if it's being multiplied by something and you don't want it there is you do the inverse operation. And the inverse operation of that is we're going to divide by what it's being multiplied by. It's being multiplied by negative 4, so we'll divide by negative 4. And then we're going to do the same thing to everything on the other side. So whatever you do to one side, you gotta do the other side. So we're gonna do it to this side. And over here, this cancels. And basically, this, what we have written over here, is the same thing as writing it like this. Two over negative four minus five x over negative four. Okay, that's how that's how we written it, wrote it. And if you think about it, I just basically decomposed something where you had a common denominator of negative 4. So next thing is let's simplify this. So 2 over negative 4 is negative 1 half. You just pull the negative sign off of it, put it in front. Now I have two negative signs over here. So those are going to make a positive. And then 5 fourths is the as simple as you can make that fraction. And then we'll put x right there. And then all we got to do is just swap this term and this term and then you have something that looks familiar. You have 5 fourths x minus 1 half, meaning that your slope is 5 fourths, and then your y-intercept is negative 1 half. So it's just a matter of writing it in that form. It really wasn't that bad. The arithmetic, and it's okay, fractions, you know, don't be scared of them. Um, and it's not that bad. So... Hope this helps you guys um, and then move on to the next video before you try to start any of these problems.